Hi there, I'm Owen from 222 and I'm here for DV247 and I'm just going to talk you through the machine and some of its features. Uh, I'll probably leave the creativity and inspirational side up to you as well though. So the machine is effectively a groove production box um, with the added advantages of a computer-based studio um, added into it. So anyone that's traditional with groove boxes or NPCs will be relatively familiar with the layout. We have a 4x4 grid square 16 pads which we assign sounds to. So what I'm going to do is just really briefly take you through how to get a sound onto a pad and then what you can actually do to that pad in terms of shaping the sound more for what you want. So once you've got the machine out of the box, the first thing obviously you probably want to look at is how to get some sounds onto the pad so you can get up and making music as quickly as possible. So the first thing I need to do is I need to make sure that I'm into the sound tab and I do that simply by pressing the sound button at the top. I then want to enter into the browse mode. So if I hit browse, machine's now presented me with all of the samples that are within it. By using these rotary encoders here, you can actually go through a filter system or a decision-making system, as I like to call it, which actually means that machine will only present the samples to you based on the information that you've put in. So the first thing that I need to do is actually find the sample bit here by moving that rotary encoder. Then I actually want to say, okay, well, I want to look at the drums. So let's look in the drums section, but I only want to look at kick drums. So I go around and I find the kick drum bit, and I could actually just view all of the kicks that machine has in it with here. This is showed in this left hand, right hand display here, or if we look on the screen, we can see that all of the kicks are being shown as well. To navigate through those, I just move any one of these four rotary encoders on the right hand side and it will take me through all the kicks. There's a lot of kicks there though, so let's say actually I want to be a bit more specific than that. And I only want to look at analog kicks, okay, so things that are emulating 808s and 909s. So now all I'm looking at is only the analog kicks within the sample library and I can go through and once I've decided on a kick that I want, all I need to do is make sure that the pad that I want it to go to is highlighted. So standard is kicks on one. You could put it on any pad that you choose fit though. I'm gonna stick with pad number one. And then all I need to do is hit the load button. Once that's loaded on, my kick's there now. Okay, and obviously I could carry on going along then, placing other samples on. We'll look at how to do that in a second. First thing I want to draw your attention to is actually within machine, you've got great scope to shape and sculpt the sound of each individual pad. So you don't just have to use the stock sounds that come within it. You can start with those stock sounds as a basis, but then actually manipulate and shape the sound to your own pleasures. So if I come back out of the browse button again, hit it off, and then if I hit this modules tab here, Whenever you load a sound onto a pad, machine automatically places that sound within a sampler on the pad. Well, what that means is actually now, because it's got its own sampler, you've got great variation and great control over the sound that you can shape. If you look over here on the right hand screen, it says one slash six. That means I'm on page number one of six pages. All of those six pages relate to that pad as well. So the first thing that we can look at is actually the sampling engine by which Machina runs on. At the moment, I'm in standard mode. I can have a choice of vintage mode, which is modeling an SP1200. And as you had with an SP1200, you have three filter settings within that as well. And then four filter settings, apologies. Or you can have an MP60 or an MPC60 emulation as well. People that are more into dance orientated music might want to stay away from those. People that are more into urban music will probably use those. But again, there, there's no rules. The boundaries are there to be broken. So whatever you feel more comfortable. To navigate my way through these six windows now, I use the cursor tabs here. And you can see as I move the right hand one, we're flicking through different two of six. Six is where I'd look at the tuning. By the start of it, I mean the start of the sample itself, whether I want it reversed. And now, here, the type relates to the type of envelope that's on. We've got it on one shot at the moment, so nothing's shown in this window. As I move it now, though, you can see, now I'm on an AHD filter, it's giving me actually attack, hold, and decay. And we have an ADSR filter, which will be more familiar to the producers as well. So this is where you can really look to shape your sound as well. You can look at the attack of the sound, decay, sustain, and release. Again, I suggest just spending a bit of time getting familiar with those and playing about with them as well, because it's the best way to learn how to 
and get the full effect out of it. Take that back to zero so we've got a more normal sounding kick drum. And take the reverse off as well, okay? I'm fairly happy with that. So I'm gonna move on to the page number two now. This is where we'd look to apply some effects to it. So we can look to increase the bit rate, decrease the bit rate, drive the signal a little bit harder. The area that I spend more time in is this filter section here. You have a choice of a low pass filter, hot band pass filter, and high pass filter, and an EQ. And again, that's relative to each pad as well. So you can actually spend a lot of time sculpting the different sounds to how you want. As with most kicks, I'm gonna put a low pass filter on to start with. I have to choose in the frequency spectrum as well. It's on about one kilohertz at the moment. I'm probably gonna take it up to about three, I would imagine. So there we are on two. Three, that'll do me. Again, if you want a slightly duller sound, you bring your cut off down. Slightly brighter sound, you're going to take your cut off up. Again, you've got resonance on there as well. We move on to the fourth page. This is where we've got a modulation envelope. And obviously, we would choose how that modulation envelope, what shape it was in by looking at the ADSR filter. But also, as well, then I get to choose the destination as to what that ADSR filter is going to affect. So, is it going to be the pitch? Is it going to be the cutoff, drive, or pan? Again, it's up to you to decide where you want those to go. If we go on to page number five. You've got an LFO, you've got one LFO per sampler, and again, you can look at the speed of the LFO, the type of wave that it's running on, whether or not you want to sync the LFO as well to the BPM. Again, you can choose your destination as to what the LFO is going to affect. Page number five is looking at the velocity again, and the velocity is how hard I'm hitting the pad. The harder I hit the pad, the more effect it's going to have. And then if we go on to the last page again, we're on to the mod world destination. Again, I really urge you to spend a bit of time just learning these and, and again, just experimenting and finding out what works for you and what doesn't work for you. So let's say now I've got my kick and I'm happy with it. I now want to put something onto number two. It's exactly the same process again. Highlight number two, come out of the modules page, hit the browse. Okay, so now I'm looking at all the kicks again, but let's say I want to put a snare or a shaker or something like that on found the snare. Again, I could browse through all of the snares that the machiner has within its sample library, or I could choose to actually use the subtype button and actually make that decision less. So let's have a look at a side stick. Okay, there's all the side sticks. Let's load it in. Okay, if you want to go through and actually audition sounds as well, literally all you need to do now is just keep on hitting the next button. And all it will do is it will replace that as well. Sometimes what I do is I write a really quick pattern and then I just literally will sit there and at each time that sound comes around to be fired, I will have loaded a new one on. Again, you've got six windows of parameters that you can change for that pad as well. To access them, remember, hit your browse, go into your modules, you're on the sampler page and that's where you would go through the six of these. You've probably noticed as well that I've actually got two, three, and four written up here as well. These are relation, relating to the modules. Modules within Machina are basically effects. That's the best way to think about them, okay? Whenever you load a sound on to the pad, module number one will always be taken up within the sound tab by a sampler. But you can apply other effects to two, three, and four. So let's go back and look at the kick drum. Let's press number two. Now let's say I actually want to put a delay onto that kick drum, okay? Now the way that I get a delay onto that tab, once it's highlighted, is to press shift and browse, okay? What this does is this takes me to the stock modules, as it were, and what I mean by stock modules are any dynamics-based things, so compressors, limiters, um, and obviously a beat delay, which is what we're gonna look for. At the moment, the machine is only looking at the internal modules that runs between it. The beauty of the machine is as well is you can host third party VSTs within it as well. So if I turn this rotary encoder here to plug in, what machinery is showing me now is actually all of the third party VST plugins that I have with on my Mac. Obviously this is specific to my Mac, so it's gonna be different for your computer, but it's a good way of you being able to use any third party VSTs that you really do like, you can still use them within Machina. The beauty of the Machina as well is it will run as a standalone application on its own, or it will run as a VST within a DAW as well. So effectively you could run Machina as a VST within let's say Ableton or Logic, but then you could also run a VST through Machina as well, so you can chain them in that sense. Let's go back to the internal ones because that's what I'm interested in. Again, these four, four rotary encoders here will scroll me through. 
So let's find a beat delay. Once I've found the beat delay, all I need to do is I need to hit the load button. Okay, and that's on now. So let's come back out of the browse mode and let's hit that kick. Okay, and you can hear that delay's on there now. Depending on which tab I've got pressed up here, that's going to present to me the different windows or the different parameters by which we can sculpt and shape that sound. We're on the beat delay tab at the moment, and I've got two windows of parameters that I can affect. Obviously, time is going to be the most important one. As I change that timing, okay, obviously the type of delay changes off it as well. The feedback is going to be the amount by which that delay continues by. So let's put it up to 100% so we can really hear what's happening. Okay, and that's just going to keep on going and going and going and going until it drops out. Obviously, it's down to you to decide what type of delay you're trying to get. Again, if we look over here, we've got coloration, we've got split. On the output, we've got the stereo mix, we've also got the mix, and then we've got the unit. By unit, it means is it working in 1 16s, 1 8, whatever. And again, it's down to you to decide what sort of unit you want to run in. Okay, let's say we want to work on a 132. Okay, or let's say we want to work on a 116. Spend a bit of time, get familiar with it, experiment as well. You know, some of the best ideas have come from experimentation and some of the best ideas have actually come from, un from happy accidents. So I'd suggest for you to spend a bit of time just getting familiar with the kit.